Hey, it's Ryan Harris with the Snow West Show. We are back again here at Hay Days 2024. And last year, if you remember, this is this was a really popular uh, podcast video that we shot last year. Uh, we had Vince O'Malley from Tempest Optics on last year. We talked about the new Tempest goggle, and that went over like crazy. And you're back this year, new model, the Infinity Lens. That's right. This, so this is uh, also the heated goggle, no external battery. It's all built into the frame. That's right. But, but the new lens that, that extends out to the full edge of the goggle. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. We also have Ryan Thompson. Uh, you handle some of the marketing and PR work for Tempest, right? What, what else are you doing over there? Uh, content creation, a um, little bit of, you know, advising and just a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Just, you, just being in the sport just, for so long. Just yep. got, a, got a lot to offer there. Yep. And then we, we got Lonnie Thompson over here somewhere. We're trying to get him on. Yeah. Right he's, out there. He's, he's, he's wandering he's around. Wandering pretending spectator. he's not hearing you. Yeah. Checking yeah, out his new heated to. underwear line. Vince, so tell us about this new goggle. I mean, that, last year seemed to be such a success. You guys sold out. It seemed like you sold out before the fall snow shows hit. We did. We did. Yeah, last year was real strong, uh, kind of exceeded expectations. I think it to us it sort of validated that we were on the right track. Um, you know, as I said last year, a heated lens, it does work. It's a good concept. And what's left is the implementation details. And uh, we wanted to integrate all the electronics inside, get rid of the battery packs, get super long battery life, a really easy lens swap capability, um, a easy fast charge, you know, just do everything we could do to take away all the objections that people might have for trying a heated goggle. Because I, I believe there are a lot of people who've never considered actually trying one. Right. Right. So that was, that was kind of the big hope for there. And we were delighted at, uh, you know, how the market responded. Um, and now, you know, the question is, okay, well, what to do next? So we took plenty of feedback, as you would imagine, and uh, made small adjustments to the product. The, one of the things that I really wanted to do was to introduce a new look because I think variety is always nice. You know, some people, you said it before, before we started the podcast, you know, there's a certain style that resonates with you, mm -hmm. but it won't everybody else, right? So throwing a, a little bit of a, of a choice at the, at the buyer seemed like a really good idea. And that's what got us thinking about the infinity lens. So the infinity lens is really, it's just like any other Tempest lens, totally interchangeable, interoperable with last year's. Uh, but it has a different aesthetic, and it also, because it has no rim on the lens, it doesn't hold, It doesn't allow snow to build up. That's one of the advantages of infinity lens designs. I'm not going to call that the most important thing in the world, but it's. Right. But it, you know, it matters. I just think it looks cool. I think, but basically, I mean, I'll be honest. When it comes right down to it, I think this is mostly about style preference, you know. But we did do a couple of other things. Um, we darkened our tints in the mirror part of the of the equation. We've got a pretty big lens lineup, but the mirrors, we decided to darken a little bit to extend their range into sunnier weather. Um, and I think it was a good call. I think, I think the internal reflections have died down a little bit, so op optically it's a little more clean. I think people are going to like them definitely more in, on brighter days. People with sensitive eyes particularly are going to like them. Um, we've introduced a silver mirror, which is the darkest of the lenses, and that's really going to be the the darling choice for the guys who are sensitive to, to the brightness. And that's one of my favorites. I think that one looks just fantastic also. But then the other tried and true lenses from last year, the, the yellow lens and the red rose, clear of course, and the uh, photochromic, they're all still in the product line. We didn't touch them. And all this can be bought in the old style, in last year's style, we call it the OG style, or in this new style called the infinity lens. So is it is it essentially the same goggle frame, and I can run last year's lens or this year's lens? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, so it's totally interoperable. You can take last year's stuff. You can switch it out with this year's stuff. Uh, you can take an infinity lens and pop it on an OG product you might buy this year, and vice versa. And the and the straps, for that matter, are all interchangeable too. The idea is you know, get the maximum out of your investment last year. If you want to embrace some of the new stuff this year, that's great. Um, if you got lenses left over from last year and you'd like to get a new chassis this year, go for it. You know, it'll all, it'll all interoperate. And there is one chassis change that's worth mentioning. We thickened the face foam. And based on the feedback we were getting, it seemed like a good move for us. It's hard to please everybody, but I think thickness usually wins. It's better than too thin. Yeah. Yeah. And so we beefed that out, uh, and that's been well received by our testers. 
you can't take him anywhere. Oh, what? Ryan, <laughs> Ryan's over there in his own world. So, Vince, give us a rundown again. Last year we went real in-depth on uh, how it's all self-contained battery. The charge lasts a long time. You know, I, after wearing this for several rides this year, I kind of was like, man, I wouldn't even call this a heated lens. I mean, it's a heated goggle, but it's not like big battery pack on the side of your helmet pulling your head down. It's just a goggle that doesn't fog. That, that's what I want everybody to think, and it's basically true, and that was our goal. Make it so automatic, so simple, that you know it's just like any goggle you've ever owned. And the only ask is that you charge it up. Yeah, you can't right. forget to charge it. That's the only thing you might end up doing, because the thing we found, Lonnie and some of the guys, you go out and you ride for two, three, four days straight, and at a certain point you kind of forget Oh yeah, I got to charge the goggles. Yeah, because they so last long. so long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then, the, and then, you know, and then, in consideration for the fact that that you might forget, um, we've tried to give it a extremely rapid charging ability. So I would argue, if you were if your battery was dead and you plug this in to your car on the way to the mountain, I bet by the time you get there, you've you've got enough charge to get through a day. If it's a long drive, you'll be fully charged. You know, in four, in what an hour. 45 minutes gets you to 75% charge. So what what is the what's it rated for, for for a charging wattage rate? Is it like a 30 watt charger? No, no you it, need a you five go? water. Just no, I'm sorry. Like, is it five or ten? Five ten. Yeah, ten. Can I charge it on like a 20 watt? Oh sure. Charging yeah, block? yeah. Like uh, the only it. thing that doesn't work is if you use the, and they're becoming antiquated because everybody's accepting and and needing more power. But the original little tiny five watt Apple chargers. The old little square. The ones. little square ones, they won't work if the goggle's totally depleted, because the goggle wants more juice than that than that charger can provide. Gotcha. But just about any USB C charger will work. Any car port, any sled port, uh, you know, just about any and any yeah any any C charger, any big USB conventional charger. The vast majority of chargers will work just fine. So where is the battery on this goggle? So the battery is hiding in the chassis off to the side. It's it's so small it becomes sort of irrelevant, you know. And I think that's part of the the uh, secret sauce of the product is how do you get so many hours of runtime out of such a small battery, right? And uh, you're a nice guy, and I'd like to tell you, but then I'd have to, you know. <laughs> So <laughs> I remember asking that question last year too. That's about the same answer I got. Yeah. Yeah, How does this work? I, I, it's a military secret. That's right. No, I, I just think it's really cool because there's no wires. There's no there's and there's just one button on the bottom, right? Yeah, and it's really just to check the battery level. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna have a goggle that has no other controls and the, where the battery might last days, you got to give somebody some way to know where they're at. Yep. And it's a four four LED uh, display. Just give it a quick push, and it'll tell you where you're at in that progress, and that's but, it. But if you don't push that button and you put the goggles on, it, it yeah, does it work? It, still it does. You don't, you don't need to push the button ever. You don't need to turn it off. You don't need to turn it on. You just wear it like you would any other goggle, and using sensing, it'll decide when it's time to go to work. Which is why the battery can last up to a week, because you yeah. know, I, I'll, if, I, if I put on like heated gloves or something else that's electronic, I will forget to turn it off. Of course. It, I guarantee it's dead the next time I go to use it. Yeah, I know. Because it's still in my backpack or in the bag of my yeah. tunnel, and I'm like... Yeah, that's right. Those would have been really nice to have right now, but... Yeah, no, that was the whole idea. Just make it... Try to make it as foolproof as you can um, and as simple as you can. And, you know, as I said last year, I, I really think the real thing here is to get more riders willing to try a heated goggle. Mm -hmm. I'll bet it's not a very big... There's a poll for you. Put it up. Ask yeah. how many people have ever tried... A heated goggle. Right. Why not? Thing yeah. to know. Why not give it a try? Well, and, and what, what is it that prevents you from, from wanting to buy a set? Yeah, right. I'd love to know. But, but we, we've approached it by saying, look, we don't know for sure, but we can guess. People don't want a thing on the strap. People don't want a cord that can get snagged. People don't want a battery that's going to die before the day's out. Right. Those are some really good. And those really are the experiences I've had, you know, over, over the last 10 years. We, we've all been there. You I know. don't want a wire because I know I'm going to snag that on no. a tree branch. I don't want to no. spend 200 plus on a goggle and no. put that wire out on the first ride. Sure. Even my earlier designs would run out of juice, you know, on the wrong day. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, we've all been there, right? It's all a progress. It's all an evolution. We're getting better at what we do. And uh, I really think this represents the state of the art in, in a heated lens goggle. So, so how... What's being heated? Is it heating the lens? Is it blowing air? Is it moving? no? What, there, there's no moving parts, so you don't have to worry about motors dying or fan noise. Uh, it's all about 
the inner lens, and that inner lens is just a thin, transparent piece of plastic of a special material that heats up when electricity is pumped through it. And when, when plastic heats up, nothing condenses on it. That's why it doesn't fog. So that, that's really all there is to it. And I, I think the moving, no moving parts will uh, have a major impact on the overall reliability of the product. Yeah, we, we've had fan, like Scott used to have a battery-operated fan. Yeah, they're still out there. They're and... still out there. Yeah, they can be noisy. Mm -hmm. And if there's snow coating, caking it up, then it's not moving any air and it's not working. And, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I, I really think we needed to do better than that, to be honest. There's no reason not to be able to do better than, than that approach. The so one thing too to mention here with the lens off that um, you'll see a white dot on this. Can you talk a little bit to that, Vince, about yeah, what that white dot yeah, is? Yeah, when about? you when you snap the outer lens onto the onto the chassis, you've got this this uh, airspace in between the two lenses. And if you go through a major altitude change, like let's say you're at sea level and you fly to you know, veil and you get off the plane and all of a sudden, you know, you've, you've had stuff in your suitcase explode, right? And stuff like that. That valve makes sure that the pressure always equalizes between the outside air and the inside air. If, it, if you didn't have that, then the lenses can get bent and distorted. Uh, and that's happened in the ski industry and the, in the goggle industry forever, you know. Uh, and so we put that valve in there to make sure there's no distortion and that, that inner lens will stay as it's meant to be. Because that outer lens snaps against an O-ring and yes. seals, seals off. So Airtight. So, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a total seal. It's a total seal. And that valve lets air molecules in but no moisture. That's, that's what that's all about. Yeah, the way we figured that out was he shipped a pair to me to for some photos and content, and when they arrived, that inner lens was distorted. And the only thing we could figure out was that on the airplane, the elevation change, um, the pressurization. It's when, it's when it got off the plane. Or got off the plane, plane. yeah. yeah. And yeah. distorted Cab, that. Cabin pressure, right? Depressure. Yeah, yeah, you could, you could see it. I mean, this is, like I said, this has been going on in the goggle industry for a while, and people have tried to solve it with different ways, like pinholes, right, to let air in and out. But it is... I mean, it's amazing. It's like it starts looking like a balloon almost. You know, it's starting to blow. Is, is it like Gore-Tex type material? It is actually. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's te it's a Teflon based product. Right. Teflon has that amazing quality of letting air pass through, but not not water. Not molecules. Water molecules. Yeah. So right. anything changed else on the frame? You you mentioned adding thickness to the to the mm, face foam. No, we did not do anything else on the frame and and the underlying heating technology we left alone and that was just based on the fact that we we didn't have much to work with in terms of things to improve you feedback know, just, was incredibly positive and it's incredibly kind of positive. that old adage if it works don't fix it right 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 and but so you can get this in the in the gray strap the red strap and we got, got We'll have six straps this season oh that's cool yeah and i don't know if we brought any more the than disco the <laughs> <laughs> Somebody bedazzled a little bit. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. I'm guessing right. it's Ryan. Yeah, we've got, yeah, so the new straps, I think it's going to be six total straps to choose from. Um, the ones from last year and then a couple of new designs. And I think uh, I think that's about it. I don't think we're, and then I mentioned that we've added a silver mirror, which I think is going to be popular. That is a really cool uh, that lens. That will be. A really good lens for bright days, too, and sensitive eyes. Yeah. Excellent lens for that. So. Yeah, when we get when we get out on the snow, I I love staying with something that has a warm warm hue to it. Yeah. So it's so yellow or an orange or a, a rose. Yeah. Um, and I like the mirror look. Like, is, is this that infinity yellow mirror? Wh is, which one is that? That's the red. Yeah. It's a, you know mirrors are funny. It's all about the angle you look it at is. it. If I it turn is, it yeah. that way, it starts looking red. If you look at it at an angle, it'll be yellow. I you love know. That. Yeah. That this that one this pops. one is super popular, but we sold a lot of the blue as well and even a lot of the green i think our mirrors were basically a success people really responded well to them and i, I think the silver is going to be pretty sweet as well so looking through the lens though as a rider point of view the blue like what what kind of a shade are you picking up so you should try them but really i str for the most part i was going for neutral for the mirrors because so, of course we've got the yellow and the rose for people that are really into those tints yeah as long as it doesn't cool everything down because you don't want you don't want to be on the snow with a lens that you're trying to look through that cools everything. Yeah, I totally objects. agree. You need, yeah. you need snow to warm up. That's right. Yeah, these are pretty neutral. The uh, the green mirror, which I don't think we have on the table, the green mirror at, uh, gives it a rose hue, and you might like that if you enjoy that sort of thing. So that's what the green does. The blue, 
leans just a tiny bit rust, which is good. That yeah. that orange, just a little bit, but so subtle. I don't want to call. You don't want to tell people, that, right. You know that right. it's an orange look. It's pretty neutral, and well, and you'll got see us it. Just trying on goggles over here on the podcast. Now you like that, Lonnie? <laughs> Should have been on the show, right? <laughs> look what you're missing out on. Oh man, I'm excited. Now, yep. riding that thing, I mean, you're you're packing a little more weight because you are you have the self-contained battery and all the electronics in there, but there's nothing that feels uh, weight off to one side. You don't have anything that you're hitting, you know, your hands on every time you're taking your goggles off. So you totally forget that that is an electronic piece of equipment, and that yeah. that was my experience with it anyway. And, That's and good. For that reason, I'm just like, why would you not wear that? Yeah. And for the price point too, why yeah. would you not? I, I didn't do say that. that earlier, but it was our goal last year, and it continues to be our goal to make this thing as affordable as we can make it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you, you can't expect to sell a lot of anything if it if only the top ten percent can come up with the money to buy it, right? So, that's the idea. We're fighting to keep the costs down, and um, you know, I hope people give it a try. So, are you retailing for the same price this year? Well, it's one ninety nine for the the uh, start the goggle with one of the solid tint lenses. Okay, that could be clear, it could be rose, it could be yellow, and then to get to a mirror lens, I should have memorized this before I got it. To get to the mirror lens, it's in the like maybe two twenty nine space or something like that. So just a little more expensive because mirrors are, and then you can get a dual lens kit, which is when the savings start to really matter. Um, and I think that's something like 250 something maybe for a, for a two, two lens. That would be a mirror lens and a solid tint. And if you compare that to any other heated goggle, if you're talking about two lenses and you add that to the kit, mm -hmm. that is a very expensive purchase. Well, I, I was just going to say, I, you know, I know that the interchangeable lenses are the big thing on regular goggles right now, but nobody's packing, inter I mean, if you're packing interchangeable lenses out on the ride with you, you're doing it wrong. You need two goggles minimum, one on your face, one in the backpack. Because you don't want to be swapping lenses out there, even though that's like the whole point of it. But this one goggle here solves the problem of why we carry two goggles uh, of the other style. Because you eventually will get one wet or you'll freeze it over. Yeah. Or you'll fog it to the point where you can't see through it. And so you're now you're swapping goggles and you're, you're 85 on the low end, 150 on the high end into those goggles. So you're 300 bucks in goggles there just to be out on riding. Yep. And, and I'll yep. have two or more back in the bag. So I would probably rock two of these, replace all the other goggles I've got, yep. and know that I can do the whole day without a vision problem. Yeah, and when the, when the spare lenses, or alternate colors I should call them, are affordable, you know, there are people who might like a photochromic on the right kind of day, mm -hmm. right kind of ride, you know, or maybe, they, maybe they're fashion-oriented and they want a blue mirror one day and a red mirror the next. Yeah, you, so, you want that in your bag. You want the ability to be able to change that lens. Yeah. But but it's not really practical. You know, you've been out on the snow as much as, as we have. Like, when you're out there in a blizzard, bad weather, winds blowing, snows falling off the tree. Yeah, like, tough. I, I and maybe I'm more picky than most people. I don't I don't want to separate that lens and, and l allow snow to get inside. No, I think that's if smart. If it's, if it's airtight. No, 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 yeah. that's smart. I, I think you're right about that. And I, I mean. and, and even on a regular goggle, I hate getting stuff on the inside of the goggle. Yeah, because it's only going to make it worse. Yeah, you can't no. wipe it off. I if think you wipe I th it off, you ruin it. Like Yeah, and I think a lot of the, the common sense stuff that goggle wearers have, have developed over the years are applicable here, too. You know, there's not a lot of new rules or anything like that. New common sense. You don't get snow on the inside if you can avoid it. I mean, I think that's still true here. Um, but, you know, again, if the goggle's not fogging up on you in the first place... Why would you well, need and, to, and There's you know. so many people that we ride with and I just see out there in the snow and they're wearing like a 20-year-old pair of goggles and the straps are wrinkled, they're so old, there's no <laughs> elastic right. left in them. And they, they're, they're having a miserable time out on the snow because they can't see crap. <laughs> yeah. right. It's like, man, if you could see, then you would not be stuck half as much. You'd be picking lines that you could actually go, oh, that's where I should be riding. Like visibility and optics are such a, a key aspect of gear. Like, like one, for me, optics are one of the biggest things why I kind of geeked out over this last year. It's like, I want to see. Like this, the most important thing about snowmobiling is vision first because if I can't see, everything goes downhill. Yeah. All my senses are depleted. I right. can't really pick up on anything else. Yep. Yeah. So true. No, it's I absolutely it. necessary. The nice thing, too, about these is, I mean, if you, if you do stretch out a lens or have a problem or don't like the color, they're super easy to swap out. You know, I don't think that's been emphasized enough on just how easy between the lens swap, swapping out the um, straps, 
and accessorizing it and so to speak how durable liking. is that is that inner heated lens like if you do need to clean out the inside oh no you can it, oh no you i think it doesn't have like it. a special anti-fog treatment on it, it it's, it's got, heated right no it's it, it has all the right stuff but it's also got a protective layer so you can go ahead and treat it like you would you know any other lens i mean what i do say is you know don't use don't use a zipper jacket you know to try to wipe that lens clean but i think a t-shirt Really, a lens cloth is always the best, and I yeah. clean them all the time. There's, oh, do you really? Oh, okay. absolutely. You can right. you can take a lens cloth, pop, cloth, pop the lens off. If you got a little lens spray, that it's always helpful. Wipe it like you would any other surface. Don't be too rough with it, but you're you're going to be fine. We that, do, that's an investment. Like you, you got to be able to clean that lens. You got to be able to clean, like and you can. There's absolutely nothing stopping you from doing it. And we also sell replacement chassis at a reasonable price. They're probably cheaper than most other single heated lenses. Just a lens. You know, so, wow. so I think it's, you know, we're trying to make it, trying to make it easy to own the product basically. And, uh, I don't think the inner lens has proven to be a, a frail point for us. Now, I mean, there's going to be a guy out there screws up, right? He just, I don't know, takes the lens off and then scratches it accidentally. I think I had one customer who mailed me in and told me what he had done, you know, and great. I, I, I sold him a new chassis, you know, at a reasonable price, but it, well, it's like one guy. So I don't think that's a big uh, a big uh, worry here. Well, we've we've tested. I mean, we've tested a ton of stuff in the industry, but um, every now and then you come across something that's just a gimmick. But this is not like like I used this last year. I love it. Uh, this is the goggle that you can just wear year round. Now that you can change lenses and you got the infinity lens, I love the look. Love the mirror. Like that's a solid setup. Production wise, are you ramping up? You're going to build more. We're this beyond year? ramping up. The, the goggles are on their way to Portland. Okay. Uh, they are in flight. So you're not going to sell out by October 1st? Well, not, not by I mean, I mean, hopefully that's what you <laughs> want to do, but you got more to you got more to go around this time. No, we'll, we'll probably, I think we're going to go live with sales this year. It'll probably take us out to November 1 when we'll start selling online. Okay. And, uh, you know, I have no idea whether we'll sell out, to be honest. I mean, we're in this growth mode, and uh, it's just impossible for me to say. But I've, I've ordered a, a pretty big, a substantial number of goggles. I, I think that uh, we'll be able to satisfy a large number of customers before we run out. That, that, that's what I believe. All right. Well, cool. Well, Vince, Ryan, you got anything else you want to add to that? I was just going to say one of the other cool features is um, they're actually the only goggle, heated goggle, allowed on the Rimshaw circuit, on the race hill climb circuit, because there's no battery attached to the outside. And... Um, you know, but see that that's actually a huge deal because you you do so much standing around. You know, a regular goggle you can get away with for the most part because you have airflow. As long as you're moving, you're okay. Mm. But man, when you stand and that's you have it. goggles on your face, you're fogging those suckers up right off the bat. Yeah, that's fact. So now now a guy can be racing and stay in the pits on a cold night, cold morning, and not worry about that. that that's really cool. All right, uh, Tempest Optics, you've got the new Infinity set up. Uh, Vince, what's the website? Best way to get a hold of you guys? TempestOptics.com on the website. Instagram is uh, Tempest yeah, Optics. Tempest Optics. And watch for our uh, fog challenge. <laughs> that, that We're cooking up fun. new ideas. Here. Okay. <laughs> we'll keep an eye out for that. All right, Vince, Ryan, thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Our pleasure. Right, Thank you. you. Thanks, Ryan.